Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Brayden, this amazingly good-looking man in beige. That's what color you're wearing. This is Tim, and this is Second Legacy, and thank you for stopping by. Today, we are going to talk about so much fun stuff. We've got some stuff that I put on just for Tim around New Mexico and gun controllers and breaking the law, but it's okay because it's not them. You know, it's a thing. We've got Texas itself. We're going to hit on that little nougat, and then we've got the oh, so simple solution of if we only did Ethan's Law, Tim, at the Goofy Gun Grabbers. This is going to be a great episode. You guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and help us grow. And thank you so much in advance for that. And per usual, Tim, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. There we go. All right. Got that out of the way. Let's go. They got oh, out of the way. Fine. Let's get it. By the way, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. fine, too, and weather's great. So, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Good. I'm glad we, we just reversed it on you guys. You guys didn't even see it coming. <laughs> well, Tim, listen, it's been, it's been a minute been a minute mm. in texas this whole texas thing dude i'm gonna be honest this is like watching a slow motion train wreck it is yeah it is but this but the senate came to save us though tim oh they did, did they now yes J just to remind did, they... the viewing audience i don't read these things or watch the videos or whatever <laughs> nope. Braden surprises me so i do just like you i'm along for the ride that's right. It gets a, it gives a genuine reaction. You know, I, I personally like it. I'm really excited about segment number two, but let's start segment number one. So the first thing I'm going to bring for you here, Tim, is a clip from the Tim Pool show. OK, so he's bringing up something that the Texas Border Patrol put up on the on the actual border, which I'm sure ruffled a few feathers. Let's play it. Dr. Button Pusher number one. Take a look at this. Do you guys know what the Gonzalez flag is? <laughs> they have this picture. What I love about it is the flag shows, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, it shows artillery, a single star, and it says, come and take it. And it was basically, uh, you know, in Texas, these guys had a cannon, and there was some, you know, military officer, I think it was Mexican, and he was like, you are going to surrender that cannon to me, and they made that flag and said, come and take it. And it's just this little artillery, it's not very big, and it's just one, but this symbol that was made that day is, it's powerful. The the big thing about this, Tim, and I think that I think that encompasses the perception at this point. Come and take it. Yeah, that was about flags. That was about cannons. That was about basically the rights where you can't come and take something that's our sovereign property or territory. But how appropriate is that today for the border issue that we're seeing in Texas? Yeah, it, it, it so is. And, you know, if I'm not mistaken, that particular flag is on the FBI's list of uh, it is uh, oh. extremist hate group right. ideology symbolism whatever along with the gadsden yeah. flag the american flag the betsy yeah. ross flag um that's yeah. a good point so, tim it is that's i mean if, if you're patriotic in any way whatsoever or any way whatsoever you're a domestic terrorist now man yeah, it, you're not Texas a domestic terrorist out. yeah if you hate america and you want to destroy it and you embrace communism then you know hey you're a good good american not patriotic because being patriotic, <laughs> patriotic. is no, no, is, no, no. is actually terrorism that's a no-no. That's that's a yeah. no. It's frowned upon. So really, I mean, so Texas, in their effort to really stick the old double-barreled middle finger to uh, Biden and the federal government because they're not enforcing laws that are on the books, um, they they actually put themselves in a very bad category. I think Tim. I think you're right. That's a good yeah. point. When they raise that flag, I mean, basically yeah. they just they just mm -hmm. you know that, that's basically the same thing as either throwing up the hammer and sickle or the swastika. I mean, it's just oh. awful. You can't have it's that awful. flying. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But don't worry, Tim, because this is the fun part. That was just Texas. That's just to get the Texas state of mind. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you've seen the bill that they put forward in the Senate, right? Mm -hmm. OK, well, um, you know what my favorite part about that bill is, Tim? And I don't even need to talk about any of the other stupid stuff in it. This is my personal favorite. The entire point of the immigration bill that they put forward in Texas or excuse, not in Texas, in the United States Senate regarding the immigration issue because of the problem that they've brought up um, was immigration and the border. So they put $20 billion in there to help the border. You know where else they put a lot of money, like about $75 billion in, Tim? Yeah, $60 billion to fight the war in Ukraine, uh, $14 billion to go to Israel to fight their war. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they even gave $3 billion to Hamas. Um, oh, a, a Humanitarian aid? aid, I think, is oh, what they're going to classify it as. But you man. know where that money is going to wind up if it gets anywhere near Gaza. <laughs> uh, That's true. Yeah. So this is flooding those tunnels, <laughs> <laughs> right? So this this is what the this is why so many people, including myself, are opposed to the border bill. First of all, uh -huh. the president of the United States already has the power to shut the border down and do everything that they talk about in this bill. Out of the 330 some pages of the bill, there's like 30 pages that even deals with the border. The rest of it's giving money to everybody on the planet. And, uh -huh. and, and this is how they're trying to push it through. 
this bill has nothing to do with securing the border. We could secure the border tomorrow. President Trump did it. Exactly. You know, yep. and as soon as Biden took office, he immediately undid everything President Trump uh-huh. had done. So remain in Mexico, Title 42. All that was undone by the Biden administration. Now he's claiming, I don't have any power. I can't do anything. <laughs> I need this bill to stop the border. Oh, and by the way, I need to send some five billion dollars to all these other countries to fight their wars. Yeah. And then Chucky e. Schumer had the audacity to suggest that if we don't send the money, then we're just going to send troops. So take yeah, it no. back, folks. We're sending money or we're sending troops. Either way, you're taking it in the rear end. You know, it's like this oh, no. if, if if they if they want if they're serious about this, if it's truly about border security, this is how you prove they're lying. Strip the oh, two absolutely. segments apart. Do the border security absolutely. bill and then take your military funding to fund all of Biden's wars and put that in a separate yep. bill. And let's see 100%. how that goes. But even then, Bro, yes. everything they're telling us about the border bill is a lie. It, it does not mm-hmm. stop catch and release. You hear all these <laughs> no, leftists out there all. saying stop. If you read the entire bill, there's nothing in there about catch and release. As a matter of nope. fact, it says you can you can let in so many thousands, like up to 4,000 a day. And if it goes over that, then they have the option of shutting the border down. But they can only shut the 5, border 000. down for 200 and some days. What's that? Yeah, yeah. it's the 5,000. Yeah. So 5,000 is the emergency point. So There is so much in this, Tim, and this is what I love about what you and I do, because we come from a perspective that is heavily entrenched in the gun world, right? The 2A politics, the 2A observations, all the fights that we've been doing for the last 20 and 30 years. We've been in that really deeply, right? Mm -hmm. The the correlation between what they are doing previously to us in the gun world and what they're doing on the border and what they're doing in all the other politics, it's exactly the same tactics. If you guys on the Republican Party or conservatives, if you're looking for veterans in the fight of what the left is about to do to you, call us because we can tell you exactly <laughs> what's about to happen. Yeah. They are literally putting in these bills and you said it so excellently. They wanted funding for Israel. They wanted funding for Ukraine for the past eight months. They couldn't get it because no one wanted it in Congress. And now they said, well, we need a border bill. So while we're doing the border for $20 billion in the United States, let's do $75 billion for the borders of Ukraine and then yeah. also another war in Israel. It, you and said we, it so excellently. God, what are we up dude. to now? Like $118 billion given to Ukraine. They want to toss Something another like $60 billion. Do you know it what might even entire- be more than that. You know what the entire Marine Corps budget was for 2023? $53.8 billion <laughs> for a year. Biden it's, gives that much money to Ukraine every couple of months. Yeah, and, it's and, just it's it's fully insane. Uh, it, it is crazy. And we just and this is to go on the rumble strip. But we just sent Cold War era B-1 bombers to go take care of like 85 targets over there in retaliation for the Iranian backed militias attacking U.S. Yeah. forces, killing three of our troops. And. I was listening to one of the generals that's one of the the talking heads now, and he was saying it's kind of odd that we sent these bombers. They literally flew from the United States. It was a 24-hour mission, and they're using Mm -hmm. Cold War weapons, and they did all this, and he speculated it's because we have so depleted our own resources, military resources, that we're relegated to doing things like Hmm. digging out Cold War bombers and sending them on 24-hour missions. You're telling me we won't have any weapons regionally in the area with all of our NATO allies? That's interesting. That's, what what that is, is going on? We have we have a- we have given so much military aid to the entire world. We're, we're we're not even. I just read a report that our own military is incapable of fighting a single front war against another first world military. No, well, that's not ideal. And, and Cold War doctrine was to be able to fight two fronts during the Cold War. Well, we can't even I mean, we fight one. <laughs> every single branch of the military got an F except the Marine Corps. It was okay, but every other branch received right. an F. They're not Depletion. ready. Yeah. Right. So that's no, why I'm so opposed that speaks to the all same this. Thing. It speaks to the same thing, though, man. They're, they are so focused on being the world's police and the world's babysitters that we're not minding our own stuff. That, that, I think that boils it down into a tight little ball. We are ignoring our regional things here at home. We're ignoring our national things at home in order for right. others, people's national border and regional. And I think, I think that kind of speaks to it really nice. That's a really, really good point. But you know the other thing that I found so fascinating about this, this is the last correlation that we'll move on to the next segment. What they always do is they use the Overton window, the left, the gun controllers. Again, if you guys want to know what they're going to do, their playbook, call the veterans right here. Woo. <laughs> um, if you want to see what they do, they go where we're going to take all AR-15s. I said this on one of my episodes. We're going to take all AR-15s. We're going to do a thousand percent tax. We'll take all the magazines. And then the Republicans go, well, that's insane. They say, fine, 
then we will take the ATF having more power to redefine who can buy guns and who can be a dealer. And then we're also going to take the ATF can indiscriminately, dis- or excuse me, disproportionately discriminate against 18, 19, and 20 year olds who are legal citizens, by the way. And um, then we're going to go for more f- uh, bribery money for red flag laws. How's that sound? And Republicans go, well, they didn't take the ARs. We won. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Does that sound familiar at all? Yeah, that's 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 the compromise, folks, I'm talking God. about. You know, it's like there's no such thing as a compromise. We just oh, lose. Nope. We don't get anything of value that's when great. we compromise, which is why we all dig in our heels and say, you know what? No, no more. Right. We're, we're, right. we're done. And you know what, Tim? I think that was an excellent segment. We've covered responsibly covered. I think responsibly, I'd like to say again, covered the border, the updates. You know what we're going to do now? Hmm. We're going to dive into something that I think you're going to get spicy on because you haven't even gotten <laughs> spicy yet. We're going to talk about how it's OK in New Mexico if you're a gun grabbing buyback to break the laws because the attorney general said it was fine. It's OK because your intent yeah. was so amazing. It was yeah. so great. You know, the attorney general, the far left attorney general in a far left state backing a far left governor. Oh, that, God. Yeah. A, a, and backing odds? a far left group that's breaking both federal and state laws. But it's OK <laughs> it's, in the state of Mexico. It's OK. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Let me bring the people in so they know what we're talking about because we got a okay. good little snicker about this in text messages. So this is number two. Uh, gun buybacks legal in New Mexico, AG staff says, after Sheriff Ferrari raises questions. Now, Tim, for, for fair warning, this is something or fair remembrance. This is something that we covered. This is number eight. We did a big deal about the fact that this gun control group, which is doing gun buybacks, was breaking state and federal laws. And this is image number eight. Um, they were basically not destroying the firearms per ATF regulations and then taking them into schools. <laughs> if you yes. guys are, you know, that whole yeah. chestnut. So there's several things that were done here, right? So first yeah. of all, they, they violated New Mexico state law, but the AG says like, yeah, we'll just give them a pass because um, mm-hmm. yeah, we agree with their mission regardless right. of if they're breaking the law or not. So we're just going to go ahead and let mm-hmm. this one fly. But if you take a look at the image, what the guns that you see there You even see a bandsaw cut through a scope. So the ATF says very clearly, this is federal law, that to destroy a firearm, you must torch cut the receiver, destroy at least a quarter inch of material, and there must be three cuts through the gun in specific areas to render it no longer as a firearm. Okay, so what you're looking at here in pictures with these single bandsaw cuts right through the middle of the receiver, those are all firearms in the eyes of the federal government. Not one Mm -hmm. of them is demilled. Not one of them could be sold or traded without a background check from a gun store because it's still technically a firearm. And in, so and in the state of New Mexico, universal background checks too. Keep that in right. mind. Right. So, and that's where this all comes from. So you had this group that went out there that decided on its own to do this gun buyback. And they said, well, we didn't, we didn't transfer anything. We went to the, the place where the guns were and we destroyed them on site. Here's evidence of their destruction. They didn't destroy anything. Uh-huh. They said no. we didn't transfer anything. They're giving gift cards to people to cut up their guns. That is a transfer. Mm -hmm. That is actually a sale. Okay. It's a sale. And then in New Mexico, there's a state law that says every single firearms transfer, private or otherwise, must go through a background check. Well, then these clowns took the guns off the premises where they think they destroyed them, but actually didn't. Then they, Uh. what'd they do? They took them to a school. (laughs) Now they're into federal law territory. They have (laughs) illegal guns under federal law in a school, which is against federal law, and they've given them to children. So they can make artwork out of them. They made guitars and all sorts of pretty things. But if you take a look at the guitar, which I don't know if we have a picture of, I don't think we do, but the guitar has a revolver frame in it. It just is missing its cylinder. It's still very much a functioning firearm if you just stick the cylinder back in it. And so, look, I don't agree with these laws, okay? But what I'm saying is this group is out there violating the very laws that they're advocating for. They supported the background check law in New Mexico, this group did, Mm -hmm. and they're out there violating that law. And then the AG goes, oh, well, you know what? That's okay. Go ahead. Cause you're on my side of the argument. Do whatever you want. Go rob a bank. We don't care. Just as long as you're anti-gun, you're good to go. Laws don't apply to you. Cause we're all friends. In fact, to, to buttress Tim's, eloquent point that he just delivered i love when you do that by the way <laughs> when you start breathing fast i'm just like get out of the way it's gonna get be great up. Yeah. <laughs> all right this is gonna this is number four doctor so um, let me let me walk you through this here on january 9th uh chief deputy attorney general james grayson explained in a letter to 
the district attorney, Rick Tedrow, that gun buyback events conducted by nonprofit organizations in partnership with law enforcement agencies do not violate a provision of the 2019 state law requiring that a federal background check be conducted prior to the sale of firearms. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is number five. Grayson wrote, again, this is the AG, or the deputy AG, rather. Grayson wrote that even though a law enforcement officer provides a surrendered firearm to a nonprofit worker for destruction after making sure it has not been reported as stolen during such events, that transfer is not regarded as a sale because the nonprofit worker does not provide anything of value to the law enforcement officer in exchange for the weapon. You know what they didn't say a word about? Where they got it from? I know. Hey, but you know what? If I'm just out there giving away guns out of the trunk of my car to gangbangers, apparently that's not against the law against, because I didn't take anything in, in, in payment. Oh, well, heck, how did you tell me? If all you, you know, had known, if only, man. So I'll basically, you if you run a gun store, just give guns away and then send them a bill for a gallon of milk later that was $400. Oh. You know, it, it doesn't, as long man. as there's no money changing hands at the time of transfer, it's not really a transfer and no background. You know what? There I'm on go. board with that. Let's, let's just start doing that. Let's just start giving guns just, away because there's no background check required. No background we'll square checks. up later. Because there's no money. It's so crazy, isn't it, Tim? And of course, if you're not picking up the sarcasm we're laying down, this is the dumbest thing ever. But I got more. I got more, Tim. This this will get you going, too. This is number six. Quote this is from the letter. The gun buyback involves two separate transfers of possession, neither of which requires a federal instant background check under the statute, he wrote. The law enforcement agency, in effect, functions as an intermediary in a manner that does not trigger the background check requirement. So really, Tim, it's so simple. If you wanted a gun and I had the gun, I would just give it to Dr. Button Pusher and he would be the intermedi- intermediary and then you could get it. A plus B equals C equals you're fine, right? No. That flow. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> How do we not so, know so, this already? So stupid. I'm sure the ATF has nothing to say about this. This is what happens when you get a bunch of leftist political hacks oh. running everything from the governorship Isn't all the way weird? up to the AG to, you know, maybe even the state Supreme Court. But in all of this, the f- I want to point out that the sheriff actually said these are illegal okay. transfers under state and federal That's law. true. Then the That's AG true. comes back and says, eh, not really. Go have fun. <laughs> Give them no, to the kids. Take them to school. You know, why there's not? intermediaries, Tim. Did you not hear me? There's intermediaries, and there was no money from the nonprofit to the law enforcement, so we're fine. But it's funny because you mentioned the ATF and the the, the uh, sheriff. Here's number seven, wrapping this segment up. Uh, Ferrari, <laughs> who's the sheriff, maintains that according to photographs he has seen, many of them are not being properly destroyed, and he said ATF officials share his concerns. <laughs> "Quote: Even though they're cut in half, they're still considered firearms." <laughs> but it's okay. What did I tell you, folks? I've only Man. been doing this for a few years. Uh, it, this, this is just, it's just simply unbelievable. Now, I, I, again, I want to stress, so, so I don't, I, I'm not in support of any of these laws. The whole point of this conversation is to make fun of these morons that push for mm-hmm. these laws to impose upon you. But when their people break the same laws that they advocated for, well, they give them a hall pass. You, it's on fine. the other hand, go under the prison. So that's exactly right. There's a big difference between what they did to Matt at CRS Firearms and what these Mm -hmm. clowns get away with, right? That's exactly pro gun, go to prison. Anti gun, free pass. Do whatever you want. That's such a good. That is such a good example. That that is. I didn't even think about that connection because what they got him on was such a stretch. And what they just let stretch. Oh yeah, a drawing. They They put him in prison for a drawing. Yeah, yeah. They just let him off. Excuse me. It was a stretch for him, convicted, pro-gun. Anti-gun, gun buyback group, openly brags and virtue signals on Twitter with evidence. No, yeah. they're fine. Post pictures of them taking guns <laughs> to school children, and hey, That's it's true. okay. That's but true. But boy, if you, if, if you, if, matter of fact, Matt didn't even make the auto key card. No. Nope. He just said, hey, you can buy one here. Somebody else made the thing, and they still put him in prison yeah. for it. Well, it was a machine gun, right? Because it was a drawing. It was a drawing. Yeah. And and in the court documents, I mean, this is really rumble strip, but the ATF said that they took one of the auto key cards and try as they might, they couldn't get it to function as an auto sear, but that doesn't matter. You're still going to prison. Yeah, dude. But yet these clowns get away with it. 
It's so obvious. Oh, it's so bad. I mean, that is, I mean, honestly, the state level thing on this one, the state level thing is kind of like the smaller potatoes because you're violating the universal background checks of New Mexico, which is the, it's ironic and it's stupid and it shouldn't be a thing to begin with. But the federal ATF definition of a firearm and then taking it onto federally owned school property, that one is the one they should be worried about, not the universal background checks. Apparently not. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. You know? I'm just like, oh, well, where's where's the enforcement? But you know what? We'll keep you ATF guys updated on anything. that one. Yeah, I'll know. But God forbid but you draw a picture of an auto share on a napkin over Man. lunch, or, or you know, true. it's uh, you may find yourself in some you know federal prison somewhere for ten years. Yeah, don't do it. Don't but, do it. You know, don't hey, take it. a rifle to a school kid and let him make a banjo out of it. You're good to go. As long as it's creative arts, we we <sighs> support the musical arts. But now, Tim, you have got us. You have brought us a delicious goofy gun grabbers episode and i am so (laughs) excited for this one because it's so awesomely good setup so this is this is amazing this comes from our friends over at newtown action alliance we've been talking about ethan's law and what is ethan's law well it's a federal proposed federal law that would require gun owners to lock up their guns so what does that mean brayden and i've talked about this quite a bit how do you enforce Mm -hmm. a law that requires you to lock up your private property within your own home how would the federal government know if your gun's secured or not well, they'd have to come and look now, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, they'd also have to know what gun you have and where you store it so they can come and check to make sure it's being stored properly. Perhaps these people never heard of the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, but that's what Ethan's Law is all about. It's about registration, knowing what you got, forcing you to follow federal law and, and locking your gun up anytime. I don't even know. Any time that Whenever. you're in possession of it, yeah, it just has to be locked up. But so right. Newtown Alliance, this is what the this is what the anti-gunners do, right? They misrepresent things. And it's not just the left, folks. I want to give the Republicans and the right equal credit here because they all are a bunch of liars. And, and the Republicans have done just as much damage to your 2A rights as the Democrats have over the years. That's very true. So, if not more. Right. But but when they say things like, well, Ethan's law, you know, look, and this is what this little video talks about. We'll get into here in a moment. Look, it, all it, this is how you secure your gun. Well, it's that's not what Ethan's law is about, folks. They're, they're trying they're, they're making it about something else to try to get you to support it. This is like the Patriot Act under President Bush. It's patriotic. Support the Patriot Act. Let's just call it patriotism like the Inflation Reduction Act. Where we print trillions of dollars and screw the inflation even more. Let's call it the Patriot Act where it, it's patriotic for us to spy on every phone call you make and read all your emails. Well, here they have the more in, it j- just outright stupidity and and misdirection to try to win over votes and support. And it says, we are sharing this video once again, this isn't their first time, for gun owners who think they can't access their guns if Ethan's law passes. It takes seconds to unlock these gun safes, exclamation point. 76% of school shooters get their guns from their homes. Lock up your guns and keep all kids safe. And then it goes through and this little video shows a guy showing you, look how easy I can get into my little gun safe here, which I have one by my own bed where my carry gun goes at night. Not the point, folks. Ethan's law mandates you lock your gun up under penalty of law. And how does the government know where your gun is? That's the problem. This is disingenuous. And this Mm -hmm. is what they do. Oh, absolutely. Uh, may, May I take may I borrow the wheel for a moment? Oh, please I mean, have at is, it. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, there's two things that jumped out here to me, and I, I find this absolutely just disingenuous is an amazing word for it. So they they try to do two things here, and they try to obfuscate the points of what they're trying to pass, utilizing silly examples, right? The first one, for example, and this is a this is a master class in what they do. The first one was, oh my god. Guys, you're concerned that the guns won't be accessed easily and quickly. Well, here we've we've solved your concern. That was never a concern of mine on the planet when it came yeah. to Ethan's law. Ever. My my first thought when you said, hey, um, we're gonna pass a federal law mandating that everyone store those firearms. Don't worry how we're gonna know that. Um, other than the fact, as you said earlier, you have to have a registry and you have to have a check in inspection service of some kind for accountability to actually make it effectual. You have to have those things. It's impossible without them, right? Right. So that's the reason people resisted. It was never, well, how am I gonna get my gun quickly in an emergency? <laughs> that was it was ne- that was never even on the spectrum of the playing field. That, nope. that that's my problem. That's not your problem. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is 
when they're going into the 76% of school shooters get their guns from their homes, lock up your guns and keep all kids safe, that's a private personal decision on how you're going to defend yourself and keep your guns safe. That's the whole point. The problem that everyone has on the gun side with Ethan's law is it takes the personal responsibility out of it and puts the government in position of a mandated authority. Therefore, they have complete compliance control and they have to know where everything is for the children. Now, right. if here's the other thing that stands out to me as I'm saying this, Tim. If 76% of school shooters get all their guns from home, why are we talking about p- passing more gun laws? Because apparently they're not buying them in gun stores, not buying them in the off the streets. They're getting them from home. So why are we passing more gun laws around purchasing when it was all about storage? And it does, one of, none of it makes sense. But but they don't focus on handguns. You know what doesn't fit in the gun safe being demonstrated in the video? An I'll AR-15. Just... And that's all they care about right now. You're not going to get an AR-15 in that little thing. As for a handgun, but they don't want to talk about handguns because they don't they don't have the political capital to ban those just yet. So they're going to pick the low hanging fruit. You know, the guns that are misused in crime less than 100 times a year in a nation of 330 million people. That's what they're focused on, like a laser beam until you're talking about Ethan's law. But then, hey, look at this little gun safe. You know, you can get like a replica AR-15 in here. And uh, yeah, and then we'll just tell the federal government you have it. And then we'll just come by, knock on your door. I've told this story it's before. So I was at IWA in, in Nuremberg, Germany, and talked to a, a German police officer. And they have safe storage laws there. And guess how they enforce them, folks? You get a random knock on your door. You don't know they're coming. And they say, hey, we're with the gun enforcement agency, whatever they call it over there. And then you have to let them into your house and show them you're safe and the fact that all your firearms are stored safely. That's how these laws work. Otherwise, mm-hmm. if you don't do that, what's the point of the law? Law doesn't do anything. Yeah, they have that's, to have enforcement. And how do they get enforcement? By violating your rights. Uh-huh. That's that's one of my favorite things about what I do. And I, I and I genuinely, Tim, and I can say this on the bottom. I love what I do uh, because I get to fight these people day in and day out, and nothing is new under the sun. That's one of my favorite things about what we do. So we have constitutionality principles. We have Second Amendment principles. We have all these principles that we know we do not violate. And that's our guiding principle. The left on the gun controllers, there's nothing new under the sun that they can do that does not give away their end goals. Right. So let me let me extrapolate a little bit further. It's not like they look around the world and they go. Oh, there's no one else has done this before. How do we get to that point? And they always start to emulate that point. You've seen politicians in Democrat circles here say, oh, if only we could be like Australia. If only yeah. we had common sense like European nations. You know, if only X, Y, Z. And they always do this incrementalism, which you, which you say all the time. They do this incrementalism of following and mimicking the steps, which are all going in the same direction, which if you just go a little further east, you get to full-on confiscation. The further east yep. you go, the more confiscation you get. But it's just, it's so fascinating the way that they go, well, maybe we should try this angle. No one's ever done that before. No, you guys have done that before too. We, yeah. We've seen all of them. And, and look, <laughs> we, we have so many examples of how this plays out long-term, right? Because mm-hmm. if you take a look at, at places like the UK, we had this conversation about zombie knives. They've banned oh. everything under the sun. They have every every dream anti-gun law that the American gun grabbers want to pass. They've passed for the most part. And now they're mm. on to zombie knives. And what is a zombie knife? It's just a scary knife that has a sharp edge and a point. Yep. Uh, possibly I mean, serrated like, over eight inches in total length, has some green on it. <laughs> yeah. Basically, Every knife on the planet is a zombie yeah, knife under that. UK yeah. law, but they got to give it a scary name. Zombie knife, not just Nothing's edged weapon, pocket knife. Yeah, let's let's just Nothing call them new. Conan the Barbarian swords. They're all banned, even if it's a three inch blade. Well, whatever. It's a Conan the Barbarian sword. It's meant for killing people. Weapon of war. All right. Well, anyway, yeah. folks, we've had a lot of fun today pointing out we the have. stupidity of the gun grabbing left. If you enjoy watching these videos, please subscribe. Please share these videos with your friends. Thank you for watching Second Legacy. We'll talk to you guys soon.